dancing in a hamster suit. And he's rocking out. Does that look like limited mobility to you? That's our guy right there. There's our mark. Workers' comp or workers' con? Plus, the rip-off realtor. I'm being ambushed by a news crew. Renting and selling houses without their owners knowing it. It's honestly crazy. And... <laughs> Vincent Owen, step aside. We've got real wedding crashers. Coming for food, fun. Sometimes they're here for a whole lot more. Like walking away with your wedding gifts. Tonight, we're on the hunt, in the dirt, in the dark, and on the streets. Can you please stop recording me? Are you a victim of the moochers? Here's David Muir. Good evening, and 2020 is on the case tonight. Looking out for moochers taking money out of your wallet, your tax dollars, and you're about to see it in action. A beauty pageant contestant, a man playing a dancing hamster all with injuries they say keep them from working until the cameras show something else. Cecilia Vega undercover tonight on the hunt to find the moochers caught in the act. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your Grand Prix finalists. Beauty contestant Shauna Palmer appears poised to take home the crown with her bikini ready body, winning smile and legs that go for miles. In April, Palmer strutted her stuff on a stage in Long Beach, California, hoping to become the next Miss Toyota Grand Prix. <laughs> but put on the brakes. Can you spot the major foot injury that supposedly kept this contestant from being able to do her day job? Palmer claims she hurt her left big toe working as a supermarket clerk. She said the painful injury left her with, quote, an inability to bear weight on her foot. But shortly after going to the doctor, prosecutors say she apparently had no problem working it in a pair of pumps, no less. And she loves dirt bikes. Insurance investigators arrested Palmer on charges of illegally collecting workers' compensation benefits totaling over $24,000. She did not lie whatsoever regarding her foot injury. She pleaded not guilty to three felony counts of fraud. Yes, Your Honor. Why should we care? When people submit fraudulent worker comp claims and they get paid for it, what well, that causes premiums to rise, John and Dill Public pay those prices. You might think suspected offenders of false claims would want to avoid the spotlight, Meet Leroy Barnes, a professional dancer who claimed total disability after getting hurt on a gig. Yet investigators say he's right here, shaking his tail as one of those dancing hamsters in the Kia car commercials. Barnes stands accused of fraudulently collecting over 50 grand in disability. For now, this hamster's out of his cage. He pleaded not guilty and is free on bail. Then there's the curious case of Dan Sluowski, a Chicago area man who said he was unable to perform his job at the Department of Public Works due to a nerve condition. Are you ready? But city investigators say he had the nerve to perform in an extreme wrestling tournament, doing his best Hulk Hogan, climbing the ropes and fake pummeling some poor sap, all while on government paid medical leave. Slowowski might look menacing in that ring, but he hid behind his door while answering questions from ABC's I-Team in Chicago. What do you do? I'm talking to my I know wrestling. I have no training. I'm not a pro wrestler. You shut up! He's also no longer employed by the Department of Public Works. He resigned last June. But would you believe someone hired to protect and serve could also be scamming the system? Hey, I'm Cecilia Vega from 2020. I was hoping we could chat with you for a second. You're Last winter, up? I had to chase down one in a group of New York City cops accused of faking PTSD and anxiety symptoms brought on by 9-11. And the prosecutors are saying that essentially you're a cop who scammed the system. It's not, I'm not a cop. You were a cop. At one point, Vincent Lamontia's case stood out to investigators because after claiming disability, he brazenly flaunted pictures of himself on Facebook looking like he was living large. Why don't you give me a quick comment and then we'll get out of I'm your sorry, hair. I really can't. You know, they say that... My hair is long <laughs> in it. Well, this fall, there's a different case involving a cop. 
New York Port Authority police officer Christopher Insera was collecting almost 70 grand in disability for a painful on-the-job bicep and elbow injury that supposedly gave him, quote, limited mobility. But wait, who's that headbanger? It's our cop fronting a heavy metal band called Cousin Sleaze, of all things. Flailing his arms and flexing those muscles, the hunky metal head has since pleaded guilty to mail fraud and turned in his badge. It's Rocker, wrestler, beauty queen, and dancing hamster didn't exactly make it difficult for investigators to find them. After all, they are hiding in plain sight, but in most cases, the suspects are pretty coy. So when there's someone mooching in your neighborhood, who you gonna call? Who you gonna call? Enter our duo, the moocher-busting PIs, Barry and Bob, who love the thrill of the chase. That's our guy right there, there's our mark. Barry Kroll is part suburban soccer mom, part professional moocher hunter, and a master of disguise. <laughs> Workout look. The secret to, to some of my success is being a woman. It's still pretty uncommon for people to think that women are private investigators. She's also not afraid to use her own kid as a decoy. It was great having that car seat in the back. It's a great prop. Perfect. Barry gets hired by insurance companies to check up on people like this man. She says her client told her the man claimed a limited range of motion in his right knee and was in constant pain. But here he is biking all over town. And the man's claim was dismissed. But Barry says these cases aren't always a full bust. Sometimes they're a dead end. It's a glamorous job to sit here and just yeah, stare, right? out the window. <laughs> <laughs> stare out the window. And... This job is not for everybody. So, but it is for me because I'm okay waiting for something to happen. There's the sitting in your car approach, and then there's this. There's a big tree right on the left. I think that's where we should all kind of meet. Catching potential fraudsters is no mission impossible for Chicago-based PI and ABC News consultant Bob Keen. In his downtime, Bob likes to skydive and swim with sharks, so it's only fitting that he plans his surveillance stakeouts like an adrenaline-fueled military operation. Bob invited 2020 along as observers on a surveillance job deep in Midwest farm country at the crack of dawn. Let's go, Bob. Let's go do this. The mission? To get the goods on a farmer suspected of fleecing an insurance company. He claims injuries from a car accident are causing him difficulty with his daily farming operation. So the money shot is what? Anything he does that makes him look like he's working. Since we're out in the bush, this job calls for some black ops. So can I just say, this is a little, seems a little hardcore here. Well, this is necessary? Here, here's, here's the exact reason why we do this. We're completely uh, getting into the elements to where there's no way that they would be able to see us. They're going to act completely normal, hopefully, and uh, we'll capture everything that they do on tape. Let's go, let's go. I find myself wading through the woods in 40 degree temps. This is where you're going to have to, holy me. Don't put your foot there. Dang. We pick our way over treacherous ground. Yeah, we need to go up. And clamber up steep, muddy embankments. I got you. Put your right foot up here. Go. Until we reach our surveillance point. So this is the house that we're going to be watching. We have literally walked for about a mile plus in the dark. This is where we're going to set up. We have a perfect view of his house. It takes four hours, but Bob finally spies that supposedly injured farmer lifting an object into his truck. We can't show his face because the case is still active. It hardly feels like enough to call the farmer a fraud. But Bob says the path to catching a moocher isn't always paved in gold. Sometimes it's caked with mud. So did you get what you came for? We gotta start. It's something for us to start building a case on. The case has yet to be resolved and I have yet to thaw out. 
Despite the tireless efforts of PIs like Barry and Bob, countless people each year keep trying to make an easy buck by faking an injury. Get back in business here. But our moocher busting private eyes will be there. There he is. There's our guy. Waiting behind the curtain and running through the cornfields to get their marks. You've got all this gear, head to toe camo. It seems like a lot of effort. You have to have a creative solution. They think that they're five steps ahead of us. So to beat that, we have to combat it with pretty much extreme um, surveillance. So you have to outsmart these guys. Totally. Next. It's morning in Maryland, and one woman's about to get the wake-up call of her life. So officers are moving in right now, so let's go. The ultimate squatter, mooching in a McMansion she doesn't own, police say. Not the way you expected to wake up this morning, huh? Forget breakfast in bed. It's busted in bed. When we return. Well, here's a question for you tonight. Is your home for sale or for rent? without you even knowing it. Sounds crazy, but it's one of the most outrageous scams going, police say. Real estate brokers with bogus listings. People paying to rent or buy your home only to show up and learn you still own it. The cash they spent, already gone. Tonight, ABC's Gio Benitez takes us on the police raid. It's probably not every day that you make a phone call like this. Hi, this is Shannon again. I'm being ambushed by a news crew. But for real estate broker Shannon Lee, business as usual is business right unusual. Can you please stop recording me? We're in this parking lot to ask why she's a broker right who doesn't sell houses, but allegedly steals them instead. It's a real estate ripoff popular with con artists all across the country. The new kind of foreclosure scheme. The deals were illegal. In case after case, this scam has targeted houses that owners walked away from after some financial trouble, stuck in limbo before bank foreclosure kicks in. It wasn't until after she received a gas bill addressed to the deceased former owner that she did some research and found the deed, which is not in Hodge's name. But few fraudsters were as good as police say Shannon Lee was. Her tale begins here, in this prosperous corner of Prince George's County, Maryland, on the day Laverne Green walked up to her townhouse mailbox. You came over here to check your mail, to put that key in, and what happened? Right, it didn't work. Laverne had enough trouble already. Divorcing and downsizing, she and her husband had abandoned their townhouse and faced losing it to the bank. One day, she stopped by to check on things and walked into an unwelcome surprise. The locks have changed. And this lady comes to the door, and she said that she was renting the property. I'm like, how can you rent this property? This is my house. Here's how. The mysterious renters said they got the place through Shannon Lee, apparently a legit real estate broker. They got her on the phone, and minutes later, Shannon zoomed up. This lady pulls up in this black BMW. She jumps out the car, and she said, well, I bought this property through a tax sale. I asked her, did she have the deeds and everything to the house? She said, oh yeah, I got everything. Shannon had actually taken control of Laverne's house, then turned around and rented it out. Nobody suspected that someone would actually advertise a property they didn't own and collect rent on it. State's attorney Angela Alsobrooks says this type of scam only works if the real homeowner isn't around to notice. But Laverne Green not only missed her house, she also had connections. Well, she picked the house of a person who worked for the police department, <laughs> and, and that's bad luck. That's right. Here's Laverne at her desk, working for the Prince George's County cops. So forget calling 911. All she had to do was walk down the hall to ask co-worker Lieutenant Charles Dooley for help. You must have looked at this stuff and said, this case is crazy. It's the most different case that I've, that I've worked in my career. Dooley got a search warrant for Shannon's place and discovered deeds he says were forged for six homes, plus evidence of an even bigger scheme in progress. I identified probably 15 to 20 other properties. 15 to 20? Yeah, that they were, had been targeted. Dooley believes Shannon's devious scheme started with scouting trips, searching for houses that appeared vacant, grass not freshly mowed, no curtains in the windows, all signs of pending foreclosure. So she kept notes on her own yes 
potentially illegal activity. Yes. He says she compiled these meticulous reports of potential targets, noting here that an owner had passed away, that another property was secured with two lockboxes, and even breaking in to take photos like these. Shannon's next step, using a blank deed transfer, adding her name as a buyer, bogus seller signatures, and a fake notary seal. The final step, walking into the county records department to officially enter the forged deed into the public record. Then police say she was ready to cash in. We fell in love with it. That's where unsuspecting victims Sharice and Michael Stewart come in. They'd answered an ad Shannon Lee had posted to rent this house. I mean, it's everything that we wanted in the house, and the price was right. So they signed the lease, despite some suspicious red flags. On the outside, you can see the damage done to the locks of the door. As if someone busted in the door and changed the locks on the doors. Shannon's excuse? She had trouble changing the locks. Okay, but even stranger, why were there no electric bills arriving from Pepco, the local utility company? We had been calling Pepco every month, like, hey, we're not getting a bill. We're afraid the power's going to be turned off. What's going on? And they can't find us in the system. And target two. The police investigation later revealed that to keep the house theft from being discovered, Shannon had dangerously rigged the meter, pirating electricity. Pretty gutsy. Yeah, very gutsy. Meanwhile, police say Shannon, along with her alleged partner in crime, Kiana Johnson, were collecting rent from this and other properties they'd stolen and allegedly even sold one for a pile of cash. You believe she really felt like she was going to get away with it? Yes, absolutely. She had had herself convinced that the paperwork was of good enough quality on the forgeries that she was, I think she thought she was in the clear. And Dooley discovered that Shannon and Kiana had taken this house hustle to a whole new level. They weren't just renting and selling the pinched properties. They were actually living in some of them, too. It's bananas. Like, it's honestly <laughs> crazy. When we come back, it's time for a house call with the sheriff's department. So, Sergeant, it's 6 a.m. We're going to that house. She has no idea we're coming. That's correct. Element of surprise. Knock, knock, the rent is due. They're going to surround the house uh, so that when they knock on that door, they're ready. Stay with us. <music> 2020 continues. Once again, Gio Benitez. And here's a picture of Target. Police believe they're hot on the trail of two world-class moochers, Shannon Lee and Kiana Johnson, who've allegedly been amassing an illicit real estate empire on the backs of unsuspecting Maryland homeowners. You must have felt pretty powerless. I did. I didn't know what to do. After Laverne Green realized her house had been stolen from under her nose, her colleagues with the local police jumped on the case. So we're talking about stolen houses? Yes. What they discovered was a fraudulent real estate scheme as shameless as it was devious. Police say conniving cons Shannon Lee and Kiana Johnson not only forged documents to steal vacant homes, they kept the plusher properties to live in themselves. Kiana moved into this sprawling five-bedroom colonial with its big yard. The real owner, Donnie Small. Police say she broke in, changed the locks, says it's her house, forged a deed. Yes, it's bananas. Like, it's honestly <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Donnie and her family had been forced to leave their beloved home long ago when her corporate recruiting job was transferred to California. So here it is, Donnie. It's the first time you've been here in three years. It's really sickening because you put your blood, sweat, and tears into buying your dream home, and we had to leave it because of financial situation. Struggling to carry two homes, they fell behind on the payments. Police say that's when Shannon's co-conspirator, Kiana Johnson, used the forged deed to move her whole family in. Now, even though we've flown Donnie back from California to visit, she legally can't go inside. Someone's looking from inside the house. I see. I see. She's shocked to see how badly the place has been maintained. Is this how you left it? No. <laughs> it's definitely not how I left it. Hi, guys. We crossed the street to visit her former neighbors. <laughs> I'm okay. How you doing? Crystal White reveals that Kiana and crew sold her a store. 
Okay. She first was just, she came over, introduced herself. We stood on the front porch, we talked and everything. So I was like, oh good, we got cool neighbors. They well, said that they were family members. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time you're here yeah. that they claim to be the family members. That your family disgusting. members. <laughs> That is unbelievable. Well, yeah, but then I know why they would do it, because then you probably aren't going to say anything if you think it's my family. No, I, you know? right, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say anything at all. Because... She says Kiana even invited the neighbors over for a barbecue. Still, something just didn't then, seem right. You know, like after a couple of the cookouts and stuff, I was like, I do not think that they are related to <laughs> Donnie and David. Finally, a friend did alert Donnie, and police evicted Kiana's family. Yet hours later, they moved right back in, then had the gall to sue Donnie's family to keep living in the place for free. Now Donnie has a plea for Kiana. Stop suing us uh, <laughs> because we're not the ones who are doing something wrong. You're, you're doing things wrong to us and damaging our lives. But today, after a year-long ordeal, help is finally on the way. So Sergeant, it's 6 a.m. We're going to that house. She has no idea we're coming. That's correct element of surprise. Sergeant Lisa Smith's team from the Sheriff's Department in Prince George's County, Maryland, has a warrant for Kiana Johnson's arrest for felony theft, burglary, forgery, and falsifying documents. So officers are moving in right now. They're going to surround the house uh, so that when they knock on that door, they're ready for whatever she may do, whether she decides to run or answer the door. So let's go. Ready for trouble, Smith and her officers are wearing bulletproof vests. And we're we're keeping a, we're keeping a safe distance right now because, as you say, anything could anything happen. Anything could happen. Ten four. She's in custody. We can move up a little bit. She's in custody. Minutes later, the officers have roused Kiana Johnson from her bed and emerged from the house. Kiana, Gio Benitez with ABC's 2020. Did you really think you would be able to convince people that this was your house? Are you sorry for what you've done? It's not the way you expected to wake up this morning, huh? Donnie, hey there. I realize it's like 3.30 in the morning for you right now, but I just wanted to let you know uh, that Kiana was just arrested. Shannon was also cuffed and booked, shutting down their alleged scheme, but leaving behind a mess. Donnie Small and Laverne Green had to file expensive eviction proceedings to get their houses back. And that family who had rented from Shannon, they lost thousands of dollars when they had to quickly move out and find a new home. Let's talk about those forged deeds. So back at that parking lot, the day we caught up with Shannon Lee, she was out on bail and in no mood to apologize. The truth will come out. The truth will come out? Mm -hmm. Why'd you steal those houses? I didn't steal those houses. That's not what the owners of the houses say. Forgery master Shannon Lee later missed a court hearing, claiming she'd been in the hospital. She handed the judge hospital admission records to prove it. But guess what? They were forged too. So he moved her into this modern, multi-unit dwelling, the county jail, for a six-month sentence. She may face more charges soon. She's obviously a very bright woman uh, who decided to use her talents uh, in ways that would have her go to jail. Donnie Small is thrilled that co-conspirator Kiana Johnson is currently awaiting trial. If somebody was telling me the story, I don't know how much I would believe it. As for scammed renter Sharice Stewart, what does she have to say to the allegedly duplicitous duo? I can't say it on camera. <laughs> God bless you. We've been reporting this story online, too. Already so much outrage, even before we came on the air tonight. Nearly a million hits already. So join the conversation. Are you outraged as well? Geo joins us tonight. We're live tweeting. Use the hashtag ABC2020. When we come back here, the wedding crashers showing up and stealing the gifts while everyone else is dancing. What do they make off with? You've got to see this. When we return, wedding crashers. That's the movie. This is for real. And this is the steal. Mooching away with the wedding money. How much do you think is sitting over there? 40, hoping. Thousands? Four. Yeah. Wow, so you better have some security guards on that. We're crashing the dance floor. Next. Well, perhaps you saw the movie Wedding Crashers. It was funny, unless it happens to you in real life. It's happening more than you think, actually. And they're not just crashing the party, 
They're stealing from it, mooching off your matrimony. Tonight, our own Paula Ferris showing up at someone else's wedding. Does anyone even notice? And caught on tape here what others have gotten away with. I now pronounce you man and wife. I'm ready to get drunk. Who is that? Who is that? The three words a wedding crasher never wants to hear. It's bad for business. Mother! Wedding crashers are skilled at turning your special day into their special day. Immortalized on film by Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson, most newlyweds hope to avoid crashers on their big day, but not this bride and groom. When they started playing Shout, I saw some champagne popping. And I was looking for it. Dan and Jessica Mealy got married here in Westchester, New York this week when we decided to soft crash their wedding. They were great sports. The beautiful bride even confessing she might want to dabble in a crash one day. You don't mind ever crashing your wedding, do you? No, no, no. Honestly, that's on our bucket list. We've always wanted to crash a wedding. You have? Yeah, we have it. Yeah, but it's not hard to do. So what is this fascination some have with going where they're not invited? Is it the free food, the open bar? That's what one bride and groom wanted to know after their wedding photos and videos included these moochers. I had asked around my side of the family and my husband's side of the family and made sure that they weren't somebody who I just hadn't met before and nobody had known them. The two can be seen boogieing on the dance floor, drinks in hand, practically going out of their way to be noticed. And now the perfect strangers are permanently part of this newlyweds photo album. They're all over mine. And I can't really focus on the people that I want to focus on. Krista Riley took to Facebook to try and match a name with a face, and the local media turned up the drama. The mystery of the identity of the wedding crashers has been solved. For Krista, at least, turns out the wedding crashers themselves noticed they had gone from the hunter to the hunted and reached out privately to the bride to apologize. Krista wouldn't reveal their identities. She says she forgives, but with this wedding album, how can she forget? I think it's tacky. I think it's rude because that's somebody's special day. So you may not know their name, but you probably recognize the type. Wedding crashers are not shy. It's not in their DNA. They're here to eat, they're here to dance, and they're here to drink. Sometimes they're here for a whole lot more. Watch as this guy enters the beautiful Tustin Ranch Golf Club in California. Cops say he swiped up all the cash and gift cards at a wedding reception here a few weeks ago. The suspect checks to see if the coast is clear, then covers the gift box with his jacket and makes a quick getaway. The uh, bride and groom did continue on and are currently honeymooning. We sent out the still photos along with the video from the surveillance photos. Hopefully that someone can identify this person. Does he look familiar to you? Because cops say this crasher is still at large. In a separate case, this Pennsylvania guy was caught after slipping into receptions and stealing 12 grand in cash, gifts, and even the bride's shoes. He finally got an invitation, but it was to the slammer for a minimum of four years. Back at the Mielli wedding, he spotted their gift box. It was positioned right where the experts say it should be, behind the couple, away from the exit, and with security standing nearby. How much do you think is sitting over there? 40, 30, 40, hoping Thousands? more. Yeah. Wow, so you better have some security guards on that. We do, we do. Oh, so if I tried to make out with that gift box right now and make a mad dash for the exit, what would you do to me? Wedding crashers thrive because most guests at a celebration don't want to ask that awkward question, who is that? But when they do, things can get pretty heated. Just watch this scene from What Would You Do? We wanted to see what would happen when guests discovered crashers at a wedding. The bride and groom were in on it, yeah! but the guests were not. Who do you know? Who do you know? Are you here with Bridget Sider? With uh, John's. John's. Yeah, I know John. The bride and groom both don't know you. Okay. You Family. Sit down. You sit down. You don't crash people's wedding like that. I'm sorry. I can leave right now. No, you're not leaving. You're going to be arrested. If wedding crashing seems like a young man's game, don't tell that to Sherry Stanford Stanley. I was excited. 
I was filled with a lot of trepidation. When the writer from Ohio turned 52 last year, she decided it was time to break out of her comfort zone and break into a reception, complete with a cover story. My name was Shelly. If they asked who I was there with, I was there with Jim Miller, who used to work with the groom. Sherry had planned it all out, socializing with guests, enjoying a cold beer, until the bride threw something at her. The bouquet landed at Sherry's feet and all eyes were now on the wedding crasher. Everyone in the room was staring at me. It was the one thing Sherry hadn't planned on, but Sherry is a crasher with a conscience. Before exiting, she left a card and gift for the happy couple. So if you must crash a wedding, crash with class. Okay, and Mocha Lupa. Mocha Lupa. Yeah, to wedding crashers. So here's the question. Do you have a wedding horror story? Tweet us. Use the hashtag ABC2020. And when we come back here, authorities calling them deadbeat doctors, making lots of money from your doctor's visits, your surgeries. So why haven't they paid their student loans? It's your money. Our team chasing the mooching medics, a prescription for a showdown you're about to see. Next, lifestyles of the rich and famous. It's the world of doctors making a fortune but dodging their debts from med school. Wonder why you haven't made it back. Just watch us try to get a doctor's appointment when we return. When we head to the doctor, we often sit there in the waiting room. How many of us have waited for hours? Well, it turns out someone else is waiting too, Uncle Sam. So many doctors making a very good living haven't paid back their own student loans. So if you've struggled or your children struggle to pay back their loans, why not the doctors? Mac up in tonight making some very unexpected house calls. 2020 is on the trail of mooching doctors. Apparently living large, operating practices in high rent places like Malibu, California, or Key Biscayne, Florida. Here in Chicago's expensive Gold Coast area, dentist Laden Krauss runs a dental practice in the penthouse of this office building. Oh, and there's another thing you should know about the good doctor. The government has dubbed him a deadbeat for defaulting on over $390,000 in student loans. I'm Matt Gutman from ABC News. So we decided to pay the dentist a call. No, no, where are you going? Come back. We just want to ask you why government says that you've uh, sconded on about $380,000 worth of loans. I'm wondering why you haven't paid it back. I'm, I'm actually in repayment form with them. Okay. I've had some issues here. Crawls is just one of hundreds of doctors outed on this list. Part of a public name and shame campaign by the Department of Education to get slacking doctors to pay up on their defaulted student loans. They're absconding with the money and they're being obstinate about not giving it back. We're looking for Dr. Press. Yes. Are you Dr. Press by chance? Doctor, how are you doing today? Sir, why don't you talk to us? And all around the country, doctors are coming down with a bad case of reporteritis. The symptoms, raised blood pressure and a sudden difficulty answering why they are on the government's list. Why is your name on this list? I don't know. Now, a defaulted student loan is nothing new, but we're not talking about young psych majors trying to pay off their degrees while working at Starbucks. The average doctor makes 187 grand a year. All told, the government says these mooching medics have defaulted on over $100 million in student loans and left taxpayers holding the bag. Why should people care that these doctors are absconding with government money? Physicians have a higher calling in the community. They have a higher responsibility. They provide medical care for people. The Hippocratic Oath says do no harm. Why should they be doing harm to the taxpayers? The government first decided to publicize the list in the 90s to shame doctors into paying up. Why did the government make such a big deal out of publicly outing all of these doctors? They were more likely to pay the money back because it's embarrassing to them professionally. Public humiliation has largely worked. Thousands have paid. But there are still over 800 holdouts on that list, including podiatrist Dr. Scott Cantro, who owes over $287,000 and graduated way back in 1979. Dr. Cantro has made a name for himself as a medical inventor. Check him out on YouTube. We're just going to place pressure stand on the floor in front of you. According to his bio, Cantro has been a medical consultant to big names like Donna Karen, the New York Giants, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And the doctor has done well enough for himself to live in this upscale home in New York. 
Now, Cantrell refused to talk to 2020 on camera, but told us it was all just a big mistake. He'd actually paid off his debt 30 years ago. Of course, he did refuse to give us permission to verify his story with the government. This loan goes back decades. Why don't you talk to us, sir? And there are plenty of other docs who seem to be doing just fine. Last month, my colleague at WABC-TV in New York, Jim Hoffer, tracked down doctors on the list who hid inside their huge homes or ran to their luxury cars. Like Brooklyn dentist Sammy Sadia, who owes $156,000. And this is almost 20 years old. More than 20 years. You graduated from NYU. Hey. Sir. Hey, no, well, sir, just stop and explain to us. We made special arrangements and that doesn't reflect the true balance. Well, why is your name on this list? Then? I don't know. Offer also put the screws on one of the doctors with the biggest debt on the list, podiatrist Demi Turner, who drives a brand new car to his practice in Montclair, New Jersey. You owe almost $700,000. Uh, I am unable to comment on that because that is ongoing litigation. Sir, why because don't you talk to us and explain what's wrong here? It's ambush. Dr. Turner's lawyer says they're working with the U.S. Attorney's Office, and while he disputes the amount owed, Turner says he really wants to settle the debt. I was raised by my parents that you just meet your obligations. Now, we all know that most doctors are responsible, upstanding citizens, like Dr. Chantal Morat. She's a podiatrist in Ogden, Utah. She scrimped and saved to repay $170,000 in student loans. We would have to kind of justify every little penny that I was spending. Despite the hardship, Mara's proud she made good on her financial obligation. It was such a big accomplishment for me to be able to know that I paid those student loans off. Now, to be clear, the government has tried to go after the deadbeat docs over the years. It's seized tax refunds, even garnished bank accounts. And of course, those efforts cost taxpayers money too. So it becomes a double expenditure for the taxpayer. Right, it's a double raw deal. The original loans don't get paid back. The government has tried to get the money back, but many of these people have just said, forget it, I'm not going to give you that money. Just come after me. Take that dentist in Chicago, Dr. Mladen Kralsch. He was sued by the Justice Department years ago and was ordered to pay the money back. But as of today, he owes more than ever because of principal and interest. Kralsch tells me times have been tough because he's lost a key investor, says he hasn't been paid in months. Everybody has circumstances in their lives. That, that's true. Life is not that, easy, that, and, and true. you know millions of Americans pay back their student loans. Yes, yeah, I understand that. There are circumstances in my life that are very sensitive that happened during this part that I've never been able to catch up properly. Okay, but I've been trying to take responsibility for all of this simply because uh, it's caught up. So a guy telling you that life has gotten in the way of him paying a loan that he's owed for 20 years, you don't buy it. Uh, there's some level of sympathy, perhaps, but not over this long period of time. That's a really long time to keep fighting and not paying. Dr. Murr certainly understands hard times. But she has little sympathy for working doctors who took the money years ago and still haven't paid up. That's just not something that I could have done. I would reconsider if I was trying to be a deadbeat on my student loans. You just never know if it would get back to you and having them say, that, you know, they didn't pay their loans. Sir, you're not going to run from us here, are you? Next, phony fortune tellers mooching off your money to tell you your future tonight. See what happens. No psychic power required. Mystic Moochers, coming up. Well, we've been chasing down so-called moochers for some time now here on 2020, even before tonight. And it turns out there is a big development this evening on a case that had many of you outraged. Someone who said they could see the future, but all they really saw were dollar signs. Once again tonight, Gio Benitez. In our last Moochers episode,